Cheer old country, new country, long as it's true country. We love to do country music from the heartland of America. And for you, country, true country, red, white, and blue country. We love to do country music, it's the people's choice. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we don't care. All this country music is drifting through the air. Love it when the baby's right. And welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that really needs a vacation. Stupid household repairs, stupid failing equipment. But uh, if nothing else, I guess this is the last episode of the season. And if I can't afford to, you know, actually physically go somewhere... I guess I'll just have to create my own vacation. And this way I can bring you all along with me. Makes a nice, neat little package, doesn't it? But anyway, I went digging through my admittedly less than vast collection of tourist videos and ephemera in general, and I came to a rather nasty realization. And that is that... About three quarters of the stuff in that collection comes from Branson, Missouri. So, by default, guess where we're going. I sure hope you have a strong stomach for country music. Welcome to Branson, Missouri, music capital of the world. You'll find the best in entertainment and family activities right here. Each year, thousands of tourists flock to Branson to enjoy a wide variety of theater entertainment. Given that the Archive has an inexplicably growing number of foreign viewers, I suppose I ought to explain what Branson is and why it's a concern. Branson is a small town in extreme southern Missouri, in the lower reaches of the Ozark Mountains. Branson is effectively the place that America's more rednecky retiree tourists go. You know, the ones with absolutely zero background or interest in the arts. Anyway, the more touristy routes of Branson date to 1960, in which the Old Mill Theater started a regular stage adaptation of the 1907 novel The Shepherd of the Hills. As of the making of this episode, the Old Mill Theater still exists and is still running this show. Around the same time as the play launched, a family of bluegrass musicians began trying to tap into that show's success. They called themselves the Bald Knobbers. More on them later. By the late 80s, the town had gradually built up a reputation for being a wholesome, family-friendly, down-home alternative to Las Vegas. Moreover, it became a hotspot for mostly country music by way of Las Vegas. By the end of 1992, artists such as Mickey Gilly, Mo Bandy, Jim Stafford, Andy Williams, and my personal favorite, Ray Stevens, had all opened their own theaters, giving themselves the golden opportunity to truly learn the grind of two shows a day, seven days a week. By the mid-2000s, a few waves of major-ish artists had come and gone from the town. However, even as far back as the late 80s, Branson became a spot for more generic review-style shows, which have ultimately become their bread and butter. As of this episode, there are zero major or even major-ish artists holding residence in Branson. Plenty of tribute acts, though. Anyone up for a Three Dog Night tribute band?
If I may get a bit pretentious for a minute here, uh, imagine that. Benny Boy getting pretentious? Never. But uh, there is one thing about Branson that genuinely intrigues me, and that is that the town, at least as far as the stage shows go, it feels kind of like this entertainment industry island of lost souls to me. Uh, you know, you've got all these near forgotten and completely forgotten performers and a whole ton of never were good enough in the first place performers. And the whole thing just feels a bit melancholy to me and horribly crass. Uh, the two can coexist. But uh, I am totally hip to the whole, if you're not good enough for Vegas, you go to Atlantic City, and if you're not good enough for Atlantic City, you go to Branson thing. And uh, I think that's the expectation here. And who am I to argue? But anyway, I've got three videotapes lined up for you here today, and this first one is actually the first of two where it's just another performance, just another day at the office, and it just happened to be recorded. Now, I should note that we are starting at the absolute bottom of the barrel here, and uh, we will work our way up, uh, as up as you're going to get in Branson. But uh, anyway, our first tape is Country Tonight, 1995 edition. And uh, this is actually going to be a bit of a vicarious stroll down memory lane for me personally, because in the years leading up to Archive, I worked on a lot of stage crews. And one of the venues that I worked at the most attracted a ton of this type of show. And uh, really, this is a damn near perfect example of the kind of shows I got stuck on all the time. Now, uh, I guess as far as plot goes, it's a, a review type show of R-E-V-U-E -E, review. And it's about country music and most of the facets thereof. Wish it were deeper than that. But anyway, getting back to my whole pretentious thing, this video kind of proves my own personal theory of art in general. And that is, the less idiosyncratic something is, the less distinct it is, and by turn, the less interesting it is. And I'm one of those people that thinks that the more you sand something down, eventually you have just this bland blob of nothingness. And... That's what we've got here. Uh, actually, this is the single most squeaky clean thing you will ever see on this show. I, I can just about guarantee you that one. Seriously, this feels like it was developed in a lab somewhere. Woo! Here we go! Tears welling up, calling deep inside, like my heart's gonna be free. However, let me tell you the rules right now. The first rule is there ain't no rules. You can stomp, you can scream, you can get excited anytime you want. You don't have to wait to the end of the song to do it. As a matter of fact, there ain't no bad time. We got your old country, new country, long as it's true country. We love to do country music from the heartland of America. Red, white, and blue country. We love to do country music. It's the people's choice. And the Chancy Cowboy, Shake your tambourine. Shake it! We 
Scott has always been proud to bring you fresh, young, promising talent. As a matter of fact, some of our young performers have gone on to land recording contracts and from time to time can be seen on national television. Well, when we first saw this next young man, we got a real feeling of excitement. And I think when you hear him sing, you'll know exactly why. From Pasadena, Texas, please welcome 13-year-old Jimmy Chandler. <laughs> his head because he knew that he had been beat and he laid that golden fiddle on the ground at Johnny's feet. Johnny said, devil, just come on back if you ever want to try again. I told you once, you son of a gun, I'm the best it's ever been. And he played, follow the mountain, run, boys, run. Devil's announced the rising sun. Next performer is here to show you some daring and dangerous feats of juggling. From Richmond, Virginia, please welcome the amazing Slim Chance. All right, believe it or not, I'm going to attempt to juggle for you this 16 pound, uh, this 16 pound, <laughs> this uh, ping pong ball. Now, I realize it ain't much, so we'll add to the juggle this uh, bowling ball. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and finally, to add the element of danger, ladies and gentlemen, this man-eating shark. <laughs> it's time for the big finish now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use them boxes and, and this rope and this cheap cafeteria tray. I'm going to create a stunning finale for you. I can tell you can hardly wait. <laughs> All right, since you're not impressed with that, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll add to the juggle uh, this plate spinning on a stick attached to my foot. If that don't get you, you gotta go see Soji Tabuchi. <laughs> Slim chance. So what you say? A little bit faster. I can't hear you. A little bit faster. A little bit faster. Got nine shows. Hey, doesn't it look like fun? I'm going to get a joint. We know this theater originally was home to Ray Stevens, and we just don't think it'd be right not to pay tribute to him. Right now, we'd like to do the song we feel was Ray's greatest contribution to the world of music. Well, we appreciate you coming to see us here at the Country Tonight Theater and hope you enjoy your stay while you're here in Branson, Missouri. May God bless you and thank y'all for going country tonight. Sticking with the whole anti-art concept here, this next video, I think I can safely say is the single least funny comedy video, uh, non-internet, that I've seen to date. And I kind of respect it for that. I mean, if I were to consciously go out and try and make the all-time worst comedy video, 
I don't think I could fail half as hard as they did here. And I'm really not trying to sound backhanded or nasty here. I, I have this perverse admiration for this one. But anyway, our next tape, as you might have guessed, is also what's on our box today. It's Stub Teaches Droop Golf the Rough Way. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? And uh, yes, this comes from the Bald Knobbers show. And uh, these two were their resident comedians. But uh, I guess I should, I mentioned it only very briefly in the history lesson. I guess I should expand on the whole Bald Knobbers thing. So the Bald Knobbers were this uh, group of, I, it was a half vigilante, half outlaw group, which existed in the Southern Ozarks for just a few years in the late 19th century. And at their worst, they would rob banks and saloons and shoot the occasional person just for fun, especially if they suspected that person might have been a confederate at some point. Now, as far as the musicians go years later, I mentioned The Shepherd of the Hills, uh, the book that was turned into a play. Well, you had these musicians that wanted to get in on it, and they called themselves the Bald Knobbers because it was in the book. There is no further significance. And I think that perfectly sums this one up. Uh, it just sounded good. Doesn't make any sense. It just sounded good. So anyway, as you've probably guessed, this is a, a cash in on the whole Dorf on golf and Leslie Nielsen bad golf videos back in the late 80s and early 90s. But there's one little problem. This comes from almost a decade after those videos. This is from 2001. And they also fail in that the Dorf and the Leslie Nielsen videos were parodies of all the how-to videos that were kicking around in the 80s and early 90s. They don't even get into that here. This is just 10 minutes of onstage banter, seemingly just taken at a random Bald Knobbers show, which awkwardly segues into 15 minutes worth of golf course shenanigans. It's a pretty classic case of sort of understanding something, but not well enough to actually put it into practice. But, uh, I'll let you draw your own conclusions. Hey, we'd like to introduce an old boy right now, and I really don't know what to say about this guy. You've heard of people that don't know anything. This guy don't even suspect nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for old Stub Matters. And here he comes right here. Teed it up. Right in the water. In the water, huh? Yeah. Took out another brand new ball, teed it up, <laughs> right in the water. In the water again. Third time, brand new ball, put it on the tee, <laughs> right in the water. Three of them in the water. And I said, hey, why don't you hit an old ball? He said, I've never had one. <laughs> on the fourth hole, we, we were getting ready to hit, and a funeral procession went by. Oh, it did? Yeah. And this, this old boy took his hat off, and he stood there till the funeral procession went plumb by, you well, know. Well, how nice. I said, boy, that's what I told him. I said, mister, that's a nice gesture. I, I, I really appreciate what you did there. It was. You know? That was really nice. And he said, well, had she lived till today, we would have been married 37 years. <laughs> <laughs> Loved the game, didn't he? By the way, Stuff, where's Droopy Drawers Jr.? I haven't seen him all night long. Where oh, is he? He's around here somewhere. Yeah, I, seen well, him I more. sure haven't seen hey, him. Hey, Droop! Droop! Come on! Hey, come here. There he is. Come oh, here. Well, look at <laughs> What's wrong with him? He looks a little goofy. He's a goofy golfer. Well, man, what, look, well, what's this right here? He's got a golf club wrapped around his well, neck. He wanted me to teach him how to play golf since I'm a lot better than he is. So we went out real early this morning. Well, here, 
Look, here's what happened. Up and down, uh, but you got them your... up and down. That's the way they work. Yeah, the way. Faster. There you go. Keep it warm and then scrub that dirt off. Is that cleaning up for you? Well, yeah, you washed all the white off of it. Now, the first thing you got to do, Droop, is address the ball. Address the ball. OK. Hello, Mr. Ball. No, not like that. Hand me a driver. Here. Taxi? Not that kind of driver. A club. Oh, like this one, then. Yeah. OK. You should have said so. Right, now. now, what you want to do is shoot as many birdies as you can. Birdies? OK. I'm going to shoot me an eagle. No, Drew, no. <laughs> I hope you've got a duck stamp. A duck stamp? <laughs> No, no, that's had for supper. Put that jug down and hit the ball. Hey, big end down. Big end down, little end up. That, now. Let that be a lesson to you. When you drink, don't drive. Don't even putt. Play the ball where it lies. Play it where it lies. Right. Play it where it lies. Priceless. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's let these girls play through here. We might as well let them play through too. For those of you that follow me on Facebook and or Twitter, you've probably seen me make posts probably about once every other month for quite some time now, in which I announce that I have found another video or album by this Japanese-born fiddle player named Shoji Tabuchi. Well, sometime within the last month or so, I have managed to, without even trying, managed to cobble together the, what I believe to be, complete video works of Shoji Tabuchi. And yes, I have watched all six of these, much to the detriment of my brain, but uh, I have picked out my favorite of the lot, and that favorite is the 1993 Shoji Tabuchi Show. Now, I first got this back on one of the first archive thrifting videos, and in that episode I mentioned that whoever bought this initially must have gotten it at one of Tabuchi's shows because they got his autograph, but for whatever strange reason that I'm not entirely sure I want to know, they got his autograph on one of those liquor store wine bottle sort of bags. And if that weren't perfect enough, the tape itself is hand labeled. 
But uh, most important is the content. And this is one of those rare occasions where I would really love to be able to just run the whole thing for you. Uh, in this case, at a little over two hours. It's just that screwy. But having said that, if you do want to see this whole thing, you can still, as of this episode, go to shoji.com and buy this very show on VHS. Now, as far as the show itself is concerned, the best way I can describe it is if you gave a fantasy-obsessed, sugar-addled, redneck, eight-year-old child a million-dollar budget for a stage show, it would probably come out something like this. And that's not to discount Mr. Tabuchi at all. I mean, he can play. He's got legit chops. But the whole thing is so insane. I, I just can't really describe it. Now, unfortunately, Shoji himself is only on stage for about half the show, which is a shame because he is far and away the best part. And uh, when he's not on stage, it's his wife and stepdaughter that are handling things. And when they're in control, it goes into full on expired Velveeta territory. Come with us, and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look. Hi, I'm Shoji Tabuchi. I'd like to welcome you to Shoji Tabuchi Theatre here in Branson, Missouri. Folks, I came over here from Japan over 20 years ago with $500 with me. For me, American Dream came true. And I love to play all kinds of different types of music. I learn bluegrass music and country music, of course, and western swing. And I love to play those beautiful theme songs from movie. Hi, I'm Dorothy Tabuchi, and I'm the producer and MC of our show. And this lovely lady right here is our daughter, Christina. Do we really need all these musicians? Yes, we do. Shot by shot, keeping at a distance doesn't pay. Bouncing money with the mission to have the perfect orchestration.
Milk Cow Blues. Bye bye. I was speaking pretty good till I got here. They said I needed more English lesson. So I got me new teacher named Meritellas. <laughs> Actually, we made a deal. I teach him how to catch fish. And for return, he teaches me how to talk. Hey, goodbye, Joe, we gotta go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part two of the Shoji Tabuchi Show. How many of you out there enjoy the music of the 50s and the 60s? Great music and a great time in history, right? Do, 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 do go, girl, do, do, do go, girl, do, do, do go, girl, do, do, do go, ba, 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 we're gonna do the rap music. We got the young one here, whole bunch of. We are very fortunate to have this young man with us. This is a, by far the greatest rap singer hit this Ozark land. Known as MC Hammerhead. <laughs> ジェットさんテッポを打ってたら地面からオイルが出てきてねジェットさん金持ちになっちゃったオーガネ持ちになっちゃったオイルが出てきてね天田ブルサールのオイルでね天造オイルかクエッカーステーツオイルあのねエブ
I found that in 2017, there was a fire at the Shoji Tabuchi Theater, and they claimed it was all going to be repaired and reopened, but they've evidently given up on it. So, since I can't do that, I guess I'm going to have to end things on a little more serious note. And uh, this was indeed the last episode of the season, but more importantly, it's the last episode of the first season away from beautiful downtown Awara. And I was genuinely concerned when I first came here. I, I didn't know if I could make archive viable anywhere but beautiful downtown Aurora. Uh, you know, it's the show is so linked to that place, but it seems to be going all right. Uh, if anything, I feel like I've had a kind of a minor renaissance this season, and I think in large part that's thanks to my wonderful viewer base. So thank you very much. And uh, as is customary around here, I am going to discontinue regular archive episodes for a few weeks while I tackle some projects around here. And so I'll still have some Ben's junks and all that lined up, and I've got a ton of stuff I need to post to Archive Annex, so there certainly won't be a shortage of content uh, until I come back in July. But anyway, I, I think what you really wanted to hear from me is that now that he's done with my landscaping, my old ex-Soviet DJ buddy Sergei is going to do his first new Catacomb of Classics at the new location. I know that's what you really want. But anyway, that's it for today's archive. I don't have a cute ending for you today. I'll just see you again soon. Ah, uh, grits! I like grits very much. How about you? Ah, no, no, I like hot chicken wing. Ah, hot. I like it very much. Ah, no, no, sushi, sushi, tabete. I like sushi, sushi, and sake nonde, sake, sake, sake to me, baby. Yo. Uh, he said.